Hi, welcome to Jonah and Monty's show. And Jonah, you're with us today, looking absolutely fabulous as ever. Thank you so much, uh, Monty. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at home with Jonah and Monty. And our exciting guest for the day is none other than David C. Wright. He's a JP and a junior minister in travel, tourism, and the sport of Cayman Island. Hello, David. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. Glad to be here. When were you first introduced into politics? In 1980 was the first time that I ever voted, but I got more like an activist. That was in 1983 when we started to campaign for a very, very close um, friend of ours, of the family, and he was running in 1984. So we got together and we were really campaigning and going around supporting him. So from that is when we really got into politics was in 1983 and we've been in it ever since. I was educated from 10 to 17 in England, St. Edmunds College in Hertfordshire, England. But when I came back at the age of around 17 or 18, I went into our family business and I was in that right up to three years ago until I was elected into government. And for the last three years, I've been in government. I'm David. How has your economy been impacted as a result of the global lockdown? Tourism is our number two pillar of the economy, and that has come to a complete halt. Um, on the 22nd of March, everything, every port, airport, port with, including the cruise ships, it was closed for a week before for the cruise ships, but then we gave people time, like Caymanians and residents, a chance to come back home. So on the Thursday, the 19th of March, air, the airports for international flights were banned. You know, we couldn't um, receive no more international flights. We allowed British Airways to do an air bridge to cut until the the Sunday. Which, would allow, which was the 22nd, to allow students and residents that were living in England to come back home. And from that, from the midnight, the 22nd of March, our ports, all borders were closed. So our tourism industry has come, come to a complete halt. And we are suffering. A lot of people here are suffering. Even the businesses, small businesses especially, being closed, the government is trying to work and see what we can do to help everybody, but it has been affected badly. Yeah, David, I had a question to ask. So in England, we've got uh, the people traveling, you know, uh, coming into England or going to holidays and coming back, have a 14-day quarantine. You have to be in your homes for two weeks. Do you have a similar uh, policy at the Cayman Islands? From the, from the 22nd of March, when all borders were closed, anybody, Caymanian or, or just, you know, residents, anybody coming into Cayman had to be quarantined for 14 days at a government-provided facility. So we have that same, that same um, provision here in Cayman that you have to be quarantined for 14 days, was what the Premier said. I mean, since we've had people asking about businesses reopening and so on, but one of the main things that he emphasizes and he continues to do so and how he puts it might be a little harsh, but it's reality. He says we can either focus on funerals or we can focus on keeping people alive. And that's how that's how his vision is. And he's pushing it towards us. We are choosing life over economics is one of his favorite fra phrases. So, you know, he is here. And he's helping us. He formed a task force, a group of people that are close to him. And they meet regularly. And when it first happened, he used to meet every day and sometimes late into the night with this task force, with which included the chief medical officer, it had the commissioner of police, and many more who could give advice on how to stop the spread and things that we would do. And I think that, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are extremely happy and grateful for the way that the Premier and his team has gone about in stopping the spread. We, we are really, really encouraged with our results. What sort of assistance has the government given to these people 
the taxpayers and um, citizens of Cayman Island. When it first came about and the, the ports were completely closed, the borders were locked, our tourism minister, the Honorable Moses Kekonwell, he put a proposal to government that we would do to begin with a one-off stipend for all the taxi drivers, the tour bus operators, the people who were employed by hotels, people who were employed in gift shops, as you say, they, they could make an application to, for stipend that would help them through the first few weeks. And now we are working on another stipend that it's gone a little broader where um, businesses, because small businesses, he's got along with the Minister for Commerce, the Honorable Joey Hugh, and they're working together, putting a program and a, a play, you know, a thing where the businesses, small businesses, can apply to get grants and be assisted through these times because they are suffering and the people are suffering. So the government is really looking out for the businesses as well as where we first looked out for people involved in tourism. David, yeah, I had a question to ask you, uh, talking about sure. businesses. In England, we've got the furlough scheme, which basically covers 80% oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, of the wage bill of employees. Now, what similar schemes do you have at the Cayman Islands to help the employees? Okay, um, one, of the, one of the best things we've done now, and that's the Premier has been pushing this, um, we have a the pension the pension plan where he this is his task force team you know besides the soft loans that they're they're doing for people who cannot work and who had to shut their businesses down what he's done now and why he's, why people are extremely happy is that he he's asked the pension providers to allow the people who have pensions to dip into their pensions. But he, there, there were suggestions that, you know, people would get a monthly stipend for pensions, but the, me the mechanisms to put all that together was going to take too long. And the premier, one of his main objections was the people who are suffering right now, they needed to get help immediately and as fast as possible. So, he got together with his task force and the financial minister, the Honorable Roy McTaggart. They got together and they put a plan together where people could, ap could apply for this pension, the grant from the pension fund. But what he did was that anybody who had a pension could play, if they had less than 10000 in their pension plan, they could withdraw 100%. Anybody with more than 10,000, they could draw the 10,000 and including 25% of what was the balance. So if, say, to make it easy, if you had 110,000 in your pension plan, you could withdraw 10,000 plus 25% of 100,000, which would be 25. So you could withdraw 35,000. And that he's saying that that's two ways. The people who need it right now will get their money immediately and quicker and then on top of that it will provide money back into the economy so people are are happy and grateful for what the plans that the premier is doing trying to stimulate the economy in Cayman. Um, what about David what about people who don't have a pension now and they're and they're out of work what how how is the government helping them? We have a it used to be called social services but it's now the Needs Assessment Unit, the NAU. They have, there's an application form that, in fact, people who were on work permits and couldn't get out of the island, they could have make a, a pa application to get a one-time grant to help them through. But the, the people in Cayman who are living here and so on that don't have a pension plan, they, they also have a way of applying to the NAU to get a grant to help them. So we know that there are people here that don't have a pension plan and that's how they would get what I mean, the help that they need right now. But we know that it's going to hit us pretty hard, but it's 
as the premier says, we are thinking of the lives of the people, and that's what matters right now. Um, you're a keen sportsman yourself, you know, into your yeah. hockey, football, cricket as well. Um, what about sports? You know, it's Premier League is starting in England, so is cricket. How is sport having an impact on Cayman Islands? Well, that's the next thing. We like the tourism industry. Sports has come to a completely, I mean, a complete halt. And Caymanians rely a lot on sports, and it's all kind of sports. You, I mean, the majority of Caymanians are involved in some sports. And I talk in if it's running, if it's training. I mean, you have this, the team sports like cricket and football and so on that are very, very popular here. And there's none of that going on. But um, this week, just now for a week, we have allowed golf and tennis because that's single, you know, it's, it's not going to be a team or contact sports. But no contact sports or no team sports is allowed as yet. And, I mean, people are suffering every day. They here, you know, we were allowed to one and a half hours a day to go training and you see a lot of people running and walking. But the actual cricket and football and everything that they used to doing, it's not there no more. When do you think things are going to start going back to normality? From the beginning, we had five phases that, um, that we would be easing into. And right now we're on like a light phase three, which... By the 22nd of, the, of this month, we're hoping that we can move into phase two, which is very, very close to everything opening up. This week, we, well, like middle of last week, we started allowing construction to start back, especially the major projects. So they had to do a lot of testing to see that they could go back on site and work. And I mean, they're under strict um, supervision too from the companies that they stay apart you know but this weekend it's it's going to be eased up a little more but still we haven't reached we think by the 22nd we can completely move into phase two which will open a lot of businesses into cayman this weekend bars and restaurants are allowed to open but it's under strict supervision where it's not it's outdoors and you know like the tables have to be eight feet apart and but it's better than what it was before. But as the Premier says, it's lives that matter. And if we allow everybody just to go back out and do life as it was before, it's going to hit us again that we're going to have to do a complete hard shutdown again. And we don't want to go back to that. Yeah, I had a question to ask. Um, what's your view, view on masks? In Europe, we've had the Czech Republic saying early on to wear masks. Now we're saying on public transports, you have to wear masks. What is the rule in the Cayman Islands on wearing masks? Well, there isn't really a rule, but it was advised by the Premier, and especially now because the Tories, I mean, the Minister for Health, the Honourable Dwayne Seymour, he provided every elected member, which we have 19 in Cayman, he provided every one of us with masks, which were like what you use in a hospital, the disposable ones. And he provided us with thousands, like the first time was a thousand, the second time was a thousand, and we got 500 more. And we've been out in the community for six weeks now. Every day we've been out there just about giving out masks. And, and then also along with that, we had food vouchers, which we were giving out as well. But the masks, everywhere you go, you see people wearing masks. And in fact, most places you cannot, go into like supermarkets, the gas stations, all these places, the pharmacies, if you, you cannot go in there unless you have a mask. And next thing is that like everywhere we have the alphabetical order, you know, where on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays is from A to K. And then L to Z is Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. And you have to go there with ID to prove that what your name is, but then you cannot get in without the mask. So really and truly, we, we are strict on the mask thing, even though I, I, I don't think there's a rule or a law, but, I mean, we, we are suggested and asked to wear masks. When do you think that border restrictions are going to be lifted? Our tourism minister, 
has set a date, the 1st of September, when we are hoping that our borders will be reopened. But that depends on the how the virus is in other parts of the world, you know, because we don't want to kill it off in Cayman and we be virus free, then open the borders and then people bring it back in and then we have to go through the whole thing. So we, he's working on the 1st of September for our borders to be reopened and we are hoping and praying so, but it depends on the, the rest of the world. Also, what about the schools in England? They stated that um, the first week in June, Germany did it in May. Um, when are y'all thinking or considering school children going back to school? The minister in her, in her portfolio, in her ministry for sports, the Honorable Juliano Connor, Connolly, has told us and told Cayman that and the parents that this year's schooling has finished. You can, you know, it's that's over with. So we are planning the next school year, which would be about September, early September. That's when they are planning that people can go, I mean, children can go back to school. And hopefully by then we are we will be virus free and they will go back because one of the next things that the premier he stresses to us is that even child care and the kindergarten schools and so on and schools you can't it's hard to keep children apart and if you set if you allow them to go back to school and one of them had a, you know one of their parents had virus and they come to school without knowing you know and they spread it that it can just start back so it's hard to keep children separated and social distancing and six feet apart. So instead of trying to do that, you know, the school year has stopped and we'll try to start back in September. It appears that the Cayman Islands have got a real firm grip on how to tackle the coronavirus. I think you are one of the sort of more successful countries that people are not talking about in the UK. Now, what can we learn? that how the Cana, Cayman Islands tackled coronavirus? I got to be honest with you, being sitting in government caucus nearly every week, we are, we are told by the Premier, he's getting calls from the Prime Minister of other countries and the President, I mean, the, um, the Premiers from other islands and so on. They are looking advice from Cayman on how we've handled it and what we planning to do in the future. So I know a lot of countries and islands are looking to Cayman to follow what we are doing. And that was right from the beginning because we were like the first island that stopped a ship from coming to Cayman. You know, we turned it back because it was a, a um, crew member who had a suspected COVID-19 and we turned it back. And then a week after that, was when we closed the cruise ship, the borders to cruise ships. So a lot of them, I mean, the advice we would like to give to the UK is, is that you, you take it serious and stop the grouping together. You have this social distancing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's very hard on people now, and it might be harder to control it in a big country like England. But, I mean, we're... we're here in, in Cayman with 65,000 people and we have the alphabetical orders and the social distancing and cutting the sports and closing the businesses is easier for us. So, I, I mean, to give advice to the UK, I think it would be sort of different. When things get back to normal, I know Cayman Islands is a beautiful country, a beautiful, three beautiful islands, and I would like to visit, give our viewers information on how we can keep an eye on things and when things get back to normal when we can start visiting Cayman Islands once more. Okay, we're I'm not boasting, but I'm proud to to advertise Cayman as a tourism destination because we started off famously with the seven mile beach, which is seven miles of pure white sand. And that's where our tourism started and we had the what was then the Turtle Farm, which is now the Cayman Turtle Center. We have Stingray City, and that is one of our most famous worldwide 
um, tourist attractions. And so I would like to say that in when the hopefully when September when our borders open back, I don't know if the tourists will be allowed back, but we're hoping that we need the tourists. So we're hoping by September that we can start inviting people back. But there's a government website, you know, the tourism website that um, you can go on. People can log on to. In fact, they update it now for COVID-19 um, for it's caymantourism dot government dot dot gov dot ky where you can go on and it keeps you updated on the situation with the pandemic right now you can go on there and read how plans are being done for eventually for tourists to come back to cayman i think you guys have a festival around that time of year september october we have a pirates week festival in november like the second week, third week of November. And that's been going on over 30 years. And we have bad of a new around Easter. And we have a lot of tourists for that. But our main one, which is Pirates Week, each district have their own festival night. And that goes on for a week. And then we have the big closing in our capital, Georgetown, down by the harbor. But, I mean, that that is a big festival. And we're hoping that by November, everything will be back pretty much to normal that we can have this festival go on again. It's gone on for over 30 years every year, so we don't want to stop now. Well, that sounds amazing. Well, David, will you, uh, will you be dressing up as a pirate in November? Well, I used to when I was younger, but I, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with the celebration, if we're virus-free, and the celebration, I promise you, I will dress up as a pirate and, and down, march down the streets, dance down the streets. Of, of Cayman Island. Thank you so much, Dave, for joining us. And um, You're welcome. We and like Monty, tell, you. tell Mikey hello when you see him over there in England, right? Mikey, yes, yes I, I will do. I'll send him your regards. And who knows, <laughs> we may even have the Monty and Jones show in Cayman Islands in November. That would be really, really great. That would be nice. And thank, thank you, you so Monty. Much, David. Thank you. And I tell you, you, I have bye. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye for now. And bye. 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 bye.